Hey, family and friends, this is your girl, Trigger Preacher. Listen, y'all, y'all got the Chick-fil-A girl, Trump girl, that is going in on Kamala Harris. Why is this important? It's important for us to talk about it because she has just dropped some truth. She has just dropped some bombs, all right? And I don't think a lot of us was prepared for what she had exposed when it came to Kamala Harris. Y'all got to check this out for yourself. It is about to get real. Do y'all hear me? Let this lady talk and just y'all go ahead and drop y'all. School bus driver. Woo! In a traffic I'm so happy you all came out to see me. So <laughs> my name is Michaela Montgomery. A lot of you guys know me as the girl from Chick-fil-A, but I am so much more than that. <laughs> Not only do I serve as the CEO of Conserve the Culture, I am also the state director for Blexit down here in Georgia. I'm a Fulton County coordinator for America First Works, and I'm also launching a podcast on the Patriots Prayer Network. So put some respect on my name. Put some respect on that girl name. She told y'all. <laughs> put some respect on her name. I'm taking that wig off the one. Now why don't we jump right into it? See, as a young single mother, I can tell y'all that rent is too damn high. I, I can tell you that as a young black voter, groceries are too damn high. And as an American citizen, period, seniors like my parents should never have to choose between medicine or food. It should never be the quality of life versus the quantity of life. And I don't want to hear, oh, but we capped the price of insulin and lowered the price of all these medicines. Yeah, but you raised the price of everything else, so it's about time to start telling the truth to Americans and let them know exactly what they're signing up for if they want to vote for Kamala Harris. We need to vote based on facts. Now, let me just say, I agree when she said it is time for us to start really knowing what we are really voting for. We're going to let her keep on talking, but she getting ready to get into some stuff, y'all. Stay, stay, stay tuned in. Facts and not feeling. See, under Harris and Biden, the average Georgia household is losing $1,060 per month, and inflation is at 21.4%. And due to the war on energy, average gas prices have reached record highs for the state. We also did a poll and 80% of us black Americans are not happy with the current state of the economy. So I'm going to need 80% of y'all to vote accordingly in November. They love me. They love me. They really love me. The left wants you to get in your feelings about things that have been said, but I want you guys to pay attention to what has been done. They don't want to talk policy. They just want to use propaganda to steal your vote. The left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community, but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game. See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a prosecutor, why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. Okay, let me stop right there, because I know some of y'all, if y'all like me, when I heard her say that, I'm like, who is, who is Willie Brown? Who is Willie Brown? Well, let me just give y'all a little bit of insight, and we're going to jump back into this. But Willie Brown apparently is someone that Camilla had an affair with when she was like about 29 years of age, all right? So I'm reading it right here from Daily Mail. And apparently he was 60 years old and he had a wife. He's been currently, I guess he's married for 22 years to this wife. So apparently this man has helped Camilla to actually pass up a whole lot of people to get to the place where she is at today. So it says that he had became mayor, right? He had became mayor and he dumped her after he had became the first black mayor, all right, in San Francisco. Apparently he has helped her. It says he was state assembly speaker for 15 years and appointing her to unemployment insurance appeals board and California medical assistance commission. So you hear other people talking about her too, like member judge Joe Brown. He said that it has been known all in the industry, all throughout the industry that Camilla apparently has sexed her way to the top. We know about things like this. They're saying she doesn't have any of the credentials to really be in the positions that she's in, but she's pretty much was getting paid. And I don't want to go all into that. 
listen, y'all gonna have to search this stuff for yourself, but it is about to get real because girlfriend is going to keep dropping these bombs. But apparently the man is still married and that's what happened. And yeah, let her keep telling you though. A few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. Did I lie? The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. She chose her side and it wasn't ours. When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, <laughs> which specifically uplifted the black Now, let me start right there, because when you do do the research, you will find out that her daddy is Jamaican and that her mother is actually Indian. Indian. So um, she said that she's identified with just being an American, all right? And she's respecting her heritage, but that's what it was stated. I didn't know some new flash, news flash, that she said that she is <laughs> identified as an Asian. So, but let her keep telling the story because can't nobody tell it better than Michaela apparently right now, right? Black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. And why are we acting like strong borders aren't a thing literally everywhere else in the world? Since when has being patriotic been a crime? See, a few weeks ago at the debate, Trump mentioned black jobs. And a lot of people got in an uproar as if they didn't know what he meant. Well, we go to the polls and cast our black vote. We go to the stores and spend our black dollar. We live in our black community, but for whatever reason, we draw the line at a black job. But wait, because if you're wondering what a black job is, please, I encourage you all to drive through Atlanta at all these beautiful black-owned businesses and check and see who works there. Probably a black person working for a black entrepreneur, recycling the black dollar, creating black generational wealth. Yes, that is happening in Georgia. I if must they come agree. here illegally and they're taking your jobs and your resources, then please believe my cousins in the Appalachians, they coming for you too. And y'all know Kamala Harris has yet to say Lake and Riley's name. As borders are, she opened the border to millions of illegal immigrants that have flooded American streets with deadly drugs and gangs that have spiked overdoses by over 124% and brought more crime into commu uh, excuse me, minority communities. So how's that for black folks? But let's take race out of it. Just as a woman, period. So let me talk about that a little bit, you guys, seriously. Um, I have taken a class in my county, okay? And let's seriously, I've taken a, a class in my county and the overdoses that are happening is off the roof. And it is a lot of illegal immigrants that are coming in that is bringing this fentanyl and bringing this drug. Now, I can't tell you guys because I don't want to give the wrong people an idea, but what this drug can do if we don't get it out of here, but it does have a lot to do with illegal immigrants being able to freely come into our borders. You don't take this stuff serious until you actually understand what is truly happening and why they are letting them in there. But that's for another time. So when she's making that statement and saying, hold on, um, and she's calling out names, y'all better go research those names because it is really true and it is really real when you don't take those borders serious. You are just thinking about the innocent people that are coming over here that just want to get away from their country. Countries, but you're not thinking about why you're letting the good in. You're not thinking about the bad that's using it as an opportunity to come in to destroy America. And that's important. I did a video talking about managing your home. Just like you manage your home, somebody has to manage this country. You will not let anybody come into your home. You will not allow anybody to, you know, um, knock at your door and be asking for food or bringing illegal things in or people that you don't know. You will vet them. And that's what they mean when they're saying that you have to be tight on the borders. Not that people can't come in, but they have to come in the right way. I did not understand it until the revelation came to me about my own home. You don't just let anybody in your home without vetting them because they can actually destroy your home. And so that is very important. So let her keep on talking, but y'all just 
Don't look for entertainment. Listen to the facts and listen to what is being said because that's truly what's going to actually make the difference. So let her keep on giving some truth bombs and um, you all make your decision after you get done hearing that, okay? Yeah. How can you be a champion for women's rights when you're taking away opportunities from biological women and giving them to transgendered ones? I'll wait, y'all, because I wasn't done. See, how can you promote equity for women and you're allowing men to play in women's sports? And what? kind of feminist would still allow men to enter their sacred spaces, i.e. our bathrooms and school locker rooms? Do I even need to mention the opening ceremony at the Olympics? Or the fact that Angela Carini was forced to fight a man and told us that she's never been punched so hard in her life? We cannot allow dangerous liberals who think things like this are okay into the White House because my daughter will not be fighting a man at her wrestling match. Girl, you better say that. You better say that, girl. You better say that. And what I think both men wow. and women can agree on is that national security is important. So who would y'all rather see lead us into war if it were so to happen? My silk press sister Kamala, or the big dog Donald Trump. <laughs> and lastly, I cannot get up here without mentioning my farmers, the backbone of this country. And aside from the Biden-Harris administration hurting you guys in ways we can't even comprehend by the rising cry uh, cost of everything, black farmers suffered even more due to the delays associated with the Inflation Reduction Act signed in 2022. Now don't let the Biden-Harris administration fool you because they waited until the ninth hour to, dis uh, to sign off on disbursements as a last minute attempt to garnish support. But why would they hurt the agricultural industry? Probably because they're looking forward to making more money in the pharmaceutical one. Wow, come on. And speaking of pharmaceuticals, because I promise I'm gonna wrap this up. When they bring up abortion and they talk about protecting your medical freedoms, don't be afraid to mention COVID. The Biden-Harris administration forced Americans to take an experimental vaccine and took away their jobs, their livelihoods, and their freedoms if they refused. Wow, let's stop there. That was really real. Now, that was the truth bomb right there. Listen, you all remember when COVID was taking place? And you remember how many doctors and, and nurses was losing their job because they refused the shot. Now, you got somebody saying that we cannot take away the rights of women because we want to protect their rights and protect their body. But at the same time, that if they refuse to actually take the shot and put it in their body, which was destroying their body because I didn't take it, praise God, then they end up losing their jobs. I even had a doctor myself because I was pregnant at the time, and she said that she had a friend that she knew that was a doctor that was going to have to end up bringing them all in and falsifying like they took the shot because they did not want the shot, but their jobs were up for grabs. Think about what is happening here. This girl just dropped some truth. She just dropped some nuggets, y'all, that if you don't process this correctly, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. This is good stuff right here. Trump gave us a choice and Biden gave us a mandate. Hey, y'all, because I'm about to kill him with this one. So the next time the left wants to tell you that, hey, abortion is a right and you need to protect your medical freedoms. Remember that they took those freedoms away from men and women the second they got in office and there's nothing stopping them from doing it again. <laughs> clock it. <clears throat> that clock so, it. So lastly, again, I'm gonna encourage you all to vote based on the facts and not feelings. Oh, he made me feel so bad when he said that. Okay, but they hurt your families when they sent all your tax dollars overseas. Oh, it hurts my feelings when he acts like that. Okay, but it hurts all of us when you see an administration failing their country that they were elected to represent. In which case, I'm going to leave y'all with, hey, mama, daddy, I made it.
She gonna go ahead and let her go now. She said, hey, mama and daddy, I made it. You know, that's personal right there. We'll let you have that one. All right. But their child is in the background talking about you were fired. You were fired. I mean, y'all talk about kids. Grown folks are childish. You're fired in the background. But listen, y'all, y'all drop y'all comments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this speech. Y'all really, look, dive into what she was saying. And then let's have some dialogue about it. Like, let's talk about it for real. Let's not be emotional. Let's not be for a particular party. Let's not be upset because they're coming against. No, that was a black woman talking about a, a so-called black woman. All right. So at the end of the day, she dropped some facts. Now, my little sister, a lot ratchet, right? And, and Camilla had brought ratchet to the stage, but she talked about nothing. It had nothing to do with politics, had nothing to do with policies, had nothing to do with absolutely nothing. Y'all go ahead and drop y'all comments and let me know what y'all think about this speech. Makala, let's give it up to her. Let's give it up to her on that speech. Um, I think she can still deal with some more Jesus herself on a personal level because that's just who I am. But at the end of the day, truth is truth. No matter if God got to get a donkey to speak about it. Y'all make sure y'all like and subscribe to this video. Y'all make sure into my, not my video, but y'all already know to my page. Make sure you like and subscribe, y'all. At the end of the day, God bless y'all. This is your sister, Trick or Preacher. And I'll be back with more over this topic.